Thanks, Alphonse. Thanks, Manolo, for having me here. So I forgot where you're from. I apologize. It's okay. Whatever. Uh, we were going to speak about metabolic surgery. Actually, uh, it's not a, a lecture with astonished results or numbers or everything that can change the world. But actually, I'm going to show you some uh, important points here. Like, where is diabetes today? what we learned with bariatric surgery, what we learned regarding mechanisms of action, some results, what have we learned, where, what did we achieve in the last two or three years, and what we need and what we want. So this is diabetes today. I know it's a small slide on the table with small numbers, but believe me, mortality is unacceptable. It ranges from three to 10% per year in this population. And Around 55% of the diabetic patients, they are not under control in spite of all those new things, the new anti-diabetic agents, pumps, diabetes centers, diabetes educators. So, and this is the algorithm for the treatment. Look of how many arrows, how many squares, how many boxes, and this is, I believe it's time for a change because 55% of the patients are not under control. So, why time for a change? I believe that the Stone Age did not end because they were running out of stones. They found other efficient alternatives to, to produce energy. So is surgery a new bronze, a new effective alternative to, to solve the problem of diabetes? Maybe. We had some imported numbers, imported results from bariatric surgery. First of all, of all we have some solid evidences. Long term, according to Dr. Buchwald meta-analysis, we have more diabetes resolution in the, most, the two most performed operations rather than weight loss long term. Is this really weight loss surgery or it's diabetes resolution surgery and there's a good collateral effect called weight loss? I don't know. Uh, the SOS study showed us uh, decreased long term cardiovascular mortality in the operated group and Ted Adams uh, from Utah showed a decreased 92% of diabetes-related mortality long-term. So those two important landmark studies showed us that we can do something for that unacceptable mortality rate in diabetes. Is it safe? Yes, it is. O o operative mortality in, in bariatric surgery is comparable to a lap coli or a hip replacement. The first 30 days post-op mortality is less than 0.3% and there is only 4.3% of any major complication. So if I compare what we have here, we have uh, actually decreased mortality when we compare to the real mortality secondary to diabetes. We ask, first, is there any direct relation between diabetes resolution and weight loss? And we answered, no, there is not. Uh, Jean Patou showed us that he compared runway gastric bypass versus the adjustable gastric band and that 10% of weight loss, there are better outcomes regarding diabetes resolution in the bypass when compared to the adjustable gastric banding. Blondine LaFerrer from New York, this is a very important paper, she compared diet-induced and bypass-induced weight loss and, in the, and when they lost the same amount of weight loss after 30 days, comparing the two groups, the surgical and the clinical, the diet-induced, there is a more important and effective incretin action in the operated patients. So, Dr. Lee from Taiwan showed us at six months, he randomized two groups comparing sleeve gastrectomy versus the room like gastric bypass. He, this is this, his definition of diabetes control and he had much better results in the bypass group rather than the sleeve gastrectomy group. So we need to rearrange the anatomy to get diabetes resolution. Those, this is, those are four papers around, uh, among around 20, 25 published already in literature just focusing this topic. So I wanted to define what is metabolic or diabetes surgery. So it's any anatomical change in the, in the gastrointestinal anatomy that seems co to contribute independent of weight loss to type 2 diabetes control. So I want, uh, this is the first take home message. Bariatric surgery and metabolic surgery, they're absolutely not the same thing because there is an anti-diabetic effect related to the operation. And we studied the mechanisms. We have the two proposed mechanisms, uh, the proximal bowel and the distal bowel. They're based on 
excluding the food from the proximal bowel, the duodenum, that's common on the two most efficient operations in dealing with diabetes, and the swifter contact of undigested food to the distal bowel, it's the distal mechanism. But we went further. Uh, this was published in, in uh, uh, Cell Metabolism, a uh, 25 impact factor, it's, uh, it's, it's from the Nature Group, where a French group showed that there is intestinal gluconeogenesis after rerouting the food through the GI tract. And very recently, it was published on February, I believe, uh, 2009, when you avoid the contact of food uh, in the duodenum, when you exclude the duodenum from the GI transit, there's a decreased intestinal glucose transport. So we studied the mechanisms, the proximal bowel, gluconeogenesis from the, the bowel itself, and decreased intestinal glucose absorption. So if we move forward in mechanism of action and showing that there is a direct relation, there's uh, a no, not a direct relation in, in weight loss and anti-diabetes effect. And we know that most of the patients in the world, they're not morbidly obese. In our experience, around 3,500 cases of gastric bypass, 70 to 80 percent of them are not diabetics. So if we know that the vast majority got PMI uh, below 30, around 28 in Brazil, for example, 31 here in the States, 24 in China, 23.8 in India. So why not offer this to non morbidly obese patients with diabetes? So those are the three established operations to, that, that were published in literature already. And this is a, a, a table that got the publications on lab bands, the only randomized controlled trial published in JAMA in 2008 by Dixon. It shows a very good um, diabetes resolution when compared to, to diet-induced. And we have two bands, gastric bypass by our groups and, and by our group and, and the Chinese group. And very recently, Cellini from Italy showed excellent results in BMIs below 35 with the BPD. We moved with the rural white gastric bypass. This is the only slide that I'm going to show you our results. This was submitted to a major medical journal. I hope it gets accepted soon. We had 66 patients with BMI from 30 to 34.9 operated since, since 2002, and we have 99% between complete resolution, no medication, A1C below 6.5, and improvement, A1C below 6.5 with less medication than pre-op. And we have 18 patients with at least five years follow-up with no diabetes. And this, according to the ADA, this is diabetes cure, and I'll show you why. It's, it's not a surgical word, it's the medical word. We can cure diabetes with surgery if they, they remain five years disease-free, medication-free. So we have in this series no mortality, no re leaks, one revision due to intestinal obstruction, and only 4.5% of minor complications. And what about BMIs below 30? Are there good results? Those are the three investigational procedures. Those procedures should be done under IRB approval. This is the sleeve duodenal jejunal bypass, uh, brought a huge sleeve over a 60 French bougie with uh, duodenal exclusion. This is a short duodenal switch. Uh, ill transposition proposed by uh, Dr. De Paula from Brazil, and the sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, this is, uh, uh, Dr. De Paula's got some variation in his study. What he concludes that if we do a sleeve gastrectomy plus a ill transposition plus a duodenal exclusion, you get better results. But it seems to be very effective, around 85 to 90% of effectivity in one year. But he has 10% of his patients with very low BMIs, and this may be criticized by the medical community. There may be some LEDA or type 1 diabetes in this, in this basket. This higher mortality rate when compared to bariatric surgery, you have to go the standards. Uh, revisions described for several reasons, and this is a major operation in very tough and complicated patients. Those linear diabetics, they're different than the, the, the more obese one, so he has 75% of major complications. Well, in summary, we need more data, of course. We need to go forward with this technique, but we need more studies. The sleeve gastrectomy, the only paper I found that deals with BMIs from 30 to 35 and mentions diabetes, it has only three diabetic patients with two resolution and one improvement, but they're all related to weight loss. Uh, I believe that sleeve gastrectomy may have uh, an hormonal effect, but it has to be uh, associated with some GI rerouting to get a very effective result. This is what we've been doing. 
Uh, I have no time to show you the details why we do this, but this is a short uh, duodenal switch or a sleeve duodenal digital bypass. This is the length of the biliary limb, 100 centimeters and 150 in the elementary limb. This is our statistics. Uh, until uh, we have uh, finished the study on 100 patients, this is the first 78 patients, uh, actually the first 30 patients with uh, one year follow-up. Those are the results, they are fantastic. We have 97% uh, of uh, patients between control and resolution. What I mean by resolution is A1C below seven with no medication, 63%, and we have close to 40% of them with, a with A1Cs below six. This is not usual in the medical literature. This is very important to stress. What are the statistical predictors for success? Uh, I, I don't have time to show you the rationale of this, but these were the tests that were applied to this population. And type 2 diabetes history and previous use of insulin are not predictors of success, no effect on success. There's no straight relation between weight loss and success. And very interesting, the more weight they lose, the less the chance for success, probably there's a change in body composition. And the only predictor of success in this population is the, the, the loss of more than 7% of weight circumference by the sixth month. We can discuss this later. This is a re real change of paradigm. The more they lose weight in linear diabetic patients, the worse the prognosis. We were, we were supported in literature by uh, papers from Japan and two from Brazil, and we learned that those patients, the linear patients that has a, a deficient beta cell function versus a, a, the insulin resistance doesn't play a major role. So that's why weight loss, it's not a major player in uh, resolving their diabetes. What, what else we learned? We learned that BMI does not reflect a deposit at all. What's ma what matters is the insulin resistance that correlates with weight circumference and the hepatic resistance makes a, uh, makes a real, it's a real good player in, in the pathophysiology of diabetes. There's a very nice paper by the group of Sam Klein from Wash U that, that tells us, was published uh, last year about the importance of the liver resistance in those, in those patients. And we learned the concept of malignant obesity. Those are two patients with the same BMI, but their adipose tissue behaves different. They have more cytokines, more inflammatory uh, mediators in the malignant obesity. So the malignant obesity got more comorbidities than the, the same BMI, but without any inflammatory effect. And we concluded that BMI should not be the only criteria, the only marker for surgery. This is uh, take home message number two. So BMI, it's another, another point, another parameter to indicate surgery, not the only one like these days. What else did you learn? We need to speak native diabetes. We need to speak their language. Uh, I, I, I cannot go to a medical major meeting as I've been before and don't know what uh, a social new era is, what performing does, what are the new agents. Because if you want to move fast, go alone. But if you want to go farther, go with the group. Of course, get with them. They're not our enemies in the, in the country. They're our friends and work with them. What did we achieve? We achieved uh, a, a very nice meeting and a very nice consensus statement by these, these four guys, Francesco Rubino, Phil Schauer, Kaplan, and Cummings, about, and some delegates, I was among the, those delegates back in 2007, and these, those are the guidelines of how diabetes should be treated or investigated in all populations, regardless of BMI. What else? We were mentioned in the ADA uh, clinical recommendations in 2009 and again 2010. What else? This is what I meant. We, this is a, a, a statement paper by the ADA published in 2009, December, that they define cure of diabetes. We never use this term. We only use remission, control, or resolution. But if you have more than five years, like I have in my bypass patients, more than five years, A1C below 6.5, with no medications, they define cure. So this is a very important step to the development of metabolic surgery. And we got support from the basic scientists. If you read these papers, very nice paper by uh, Alison Goldfein from Boston, they support surgery regardless of BMI, straight, straight, uh, rela straightly related to the mechanism of action of surgery. So we're moving fast and we're moving with them. Now the diabetologists speaking diabetes and now speaking basic science. What do we need and what we want? Well, 
we need to define timing for surgery. This is a very major point that we need to study. This is my personal opinion. We have to go, and I was supported by different diabetologists around the world. We have to intervene in those patients when there is still beta cell function and insulin resistance is start going up. If we wait to go with the decline of the beta cell, those patients will detect as unreversible. So surgery, new drugs, uh, uh, GLP-1 analogs, this won't work at all. So I believe, in my opinion, and again, this is, has been supported by several different diabetologists around the world, that this maybe should be the point for the timing of surgery. Again, this is not a concept, it's a personal opinion. I'm dealing with this since 2002. Well, what we see today, again, is a personal opinion that in patients with uh, BMI 30 to 35, there is strong data that suggests that surgery in non-controlled patients, this is around 30 to 35 percent of them, surgery may be a good option. And so far, the runway gastric bypass and the DPD seem to be good and efficient procedures. What's our goal? You remember those numbers of squares and arrows? We want to be another arrow and another square. This is our goal. This is what we should go after. We don't need to be the, diabetes is a medical disease, but we want to be one of the squares. If they had tons of squares here, without the newer agents. If you see the new, the new thing that was published by the AACE, it's incredible. There are, I counted them, 34 squares. Why not 35? If we know that this may work and it actually works. And finally, where should we aim? Well, this is a surgical audience, uh, I'm comfortable. So, but we need to speak again, native contemporary diabetes. What is this? Randomized controlled trials. I believe that, against a personal opinion, this is biased against us because, for example, liraglutide, liraglutide is a, it's a new GLP-1 analog, was released two months ago here in the States, not in Europe yet, and in Brazil as well. They, it was released and approved by the FDA and other, and other um, uh, uh, FDA-like uh, institutions around the world without any randomized controlled trial and, and without any long-term results over cardiovascular mortality. So, Okay, we are in the right side of the corner. Okay, so let's go and speak native diabetes. Let's go with randomized controlled trials. We started ours with gastric bypass versus the sleeve DJB versus the best medical treatment. It's a work in progress. I know there are around 14 uh, trials like this going around the world. This is our goal. When we show this, we're gonna be another square, another arrow. The last slide, this is where we wanna go to the summit. We're still here. So we are not ready for, for, for prime time yet. We need more studies. Again, we need, this is a third take home message. We need to join groups in the world, do very huge, big randomized controlled trials to prove and to have our place in the spotlight with another square and another arrow in metabolic surgery. Thank you.